Hello everybody, Skin Deep Beauty Vlogger here. I hope you're all really well. As you can tell by my appearance, today's video is going to be another first impressions video. You really seem to be liking these, which I'm really happy about. I really like filming them. It's a great way of trying out different products and giving you my thoughts. If you've got any requests for first impressions videos, then do pop them below. The only thing that I don't like to do first impressions of is mascaras because it does tend to take me a while to get to grips with them and I prefer them once they've dried out that little bit and not so much when they've first opened. But today's review is going to be of the L'Oreal Nude Magique Eau de Tente Foundation. Now this was sent to me for review but in no way will that impact my opinion as always. I think this has a different name in the North America but um, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's been quite heavily advertised. It's meant to be lighter than water and to be honest, I'm not expecting to like this. <laughs> it's um, The reason I'm not expecting to like it is because it's meant to have very light coverage. I prefer something a little bit fuller in terms of coverage, or at least buildable. And, I don't know, it just seems a bit gimmicky. But, I don't know, even though it was sent to me for review, I'm actually a bit more cynical. So, it says it's a fresh feel foundation, weightless, bare perfection with SPF 18. Um, it's a pretty small bottle. It's a 20ml size, which most foundations that I've tried certainly have been 30ml, so not too much product in here. Um, you're meant to shake it well before use and apply a drop to your finger, and then they say it's best applied using your hands, which, again, I prefer using a brush to apply my foundation, so we'll see how I get on. Okay, so I was sent the shade... 110 Warm Ivory. I've got no idea if this is going to be my shade. I'm not familiar with L'Oreal foundations and I believe that there's a much smaller shade range of this in the UK than in the US. Um, so that's not too great but I'll be talking about that more in my final review of the day. For now I'm just going to pop it on and give you my initial impressions. I'll check back throughout the day and then for my final thoughts I will be telling you how this compares with what the company claims. So I'm going to shake this up and apply it onto my skin. So Let's shake it up very liquidy, you can hear. I'm scared it's going to be really liquidy and difficult to apply. So, oh, it looks dark. Onto my finger. I guess I just... Wow, that's... Uh, this is going to be too dark for me. I haven't got too much to do today. I'm working from home, so I guess the colour match isn't too much of a problem. I'm just going to blend that in. Woo, it's a very light coverage. It feels um, quite velvety, like it's, it's turning to a powder as it applies. But anyway, we'll get a feel for whether I like the product. So just ignore the fact that it's clearly going to be the wrong colour. It does apply very smoothly. And despite thinking that I wasn't going to like that you had to use your hands, I mean, it feels, you know, it's nice enough to apply. It's blending into the skin easily. It is a super sheer coverage though. I mean, this is... I've tried BB creams with more coverage than this. I, I do not like this coverage. It's not for me. You know, I've got some acne scarring. And... I mean, I barely think it's evening out my skin tone. I'm actually going to throw on a second layer. I, mean, I usually cover up my acne scars with concealer, but I'd like a little bit of help. Pop a second layer on and see how that works. It feels... You know when you first apply a primer that's very silicone laden? It feels like that on the skin. Sort of gliding on in a very velvety way. It's so sheer in terms of coverage, which I, I was expecting. You know, people had pre-warned me that this may not be for me because because it's so sheer, but yeah. I don't really know who this is aimed at because if you had flawless enough skin to get away with such a sheer foundation, then to be honest, I think you'd be better off just letting your skin breathe and just going in with concealer where you need, or maybe a BB cream where you're getting some skincare benefits. I just, I don't like that this is so sheer. It is blending into the skin well, I'll give it that. Okay, so initial thoughts are the colour is pretty dark. I would say it's running quite sort of yellowy-orange, so definitely not a pink-toned foundation, um, at least not the 110 Warm Ivory shade. 
I thought that the application method was really going to bother me. I thought it was going to be messy and that I just wouldn't like applying it with my hands, but actually it didn't bother me too much. I, you just pop it on sort of onto the tip of your finger and then apply. So it's actually not that messy. It's certainly better than a jar foundation. It feels very silicone-y. It, it really does feel like I'm just applying a primer onto my skin, so that's silicone-y kind of feel. The thing that I don't like is the sheer coverage, but you know, that's personal preference. I don't like a sheer coverage, but this is beyond sheer. I mean, this is not a light coverage foundation. I would say it's sheer. It's literally giving my skin a little bit of a tint, the wrong tint. Maybe now it's blended in, it's not too bad, but I'm not sure. I think now that I've applied a second layer, I'm happier with the coverage, but even so, it's still very sheer. I mean, it does look skin-like and natural extremely natural I would say so um, that would be a positive on the whole so far I'm not liking this but I'm going to go and apply the rest of my makeup and then I'll check back with the time and then I'll be checking in throughout the day and uh, letting you know what I think I don't know if this is meant to go to a cream to powder finish I'm a bit confused I also don't have, I normally mention if I've noticed a scent and I haven't no, no discernible scent. It was smelling it out of the bottle, it smells a little bit alcoholy, but for now I'm going to go and apply the rest of my makeup and then I'll check back. Okay, so I've applied the rest of my products. It was pretty weird applying them. They felt sort of, I felt like they applied quite smoothly. You know, my concealer sunk into the skin, blended well. I did do a home facial last night, so I probably would have expected it to apply quite well anyway. Um, but, oops. But I guess you could kind of attribute that to the fact that this does feel like it's got a silicone, velvety finish. Um, once I was applying the rest of my makeup, I really know what people mean about this having a sort of liquid to powder finish. Because I was kind of applying my makeup and I was like, well, how does it work? Well, do, I, do I put powder on or not? I didn't feel that I needed to, but then I wanted to set my concealer. So I've just done a light dusting of powder, um, just my Revlon Nearly Naked through the T-zone and a little bit of my... Ben and I under my eyes. In fairness, I think that now I've got my concealer on, the coverage isn't too bad. I, I still feel a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I, you know, I'd leave the house. I wouldn't like, you know, I feel like I've got a, enough coverage that I would feel better about, you know, the fact that I've got some acne scarring and I think I've managed to cover them up with this and the concealer. I would describe it as having a sort of there's certainly no dewiness on my skin. It's very, I mean, I wouldn't say it's matte. I would say sort of like a satin or velvet finish. Very, very natural. It really does not look like I'm wearing foundation at all. Um, so if you want a natural foundation, then on first impressions, I'd say this would be for you. I completely forgot to say while I was applying this, I think I was all hung up on the application method, um, that I hadn't sort of done anything like primer. I hadn't prepped my skin other than putting on my normal moisturiser and a bit of eye cream. So um, no primer on, just putting this directly onto moisturised skin. I will let you know how I get on throughout the day. I've been faffing around for far too long and it's coming up to 20 past 11. So um, as I said, I'm working from home today, quite a bit to get on with and I think I've just been procrastinating a little bit. So let me get on and you know get my writing done. I'm on deadline so um, I will see you in a bit. Hello everybody, it is coming up to one o'clock so I thought that I would check in with some thoughts on how I feel that the L'Oreal Nude Magic Eau de Tente foundation is wearing. I have to say that I'm increasingly liking this. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a favourite, I'm still sort of not sure about the sort of sheerness and the fact that I had to build up two layers, I could even go with three. Um, in terms of getting the coverage that I would like. But actually I think it's wearing very well. It feels like I'm wearing absolutely nothing on my skin. It does not feel like I've got any foundation on at all. Um, you know, sort of no tackiness. Um, it feels very smooth and and lightweight, as, as you would expect. And that lives up to sort of their whole advertising campaign about how it's lighter than water. Um, I haven't noticed any oxidization or any sort of wearing off in any areas. In fact, my allergies have been playing up a little bit today. This may be a bit too much information but it's going to demonstrate what I'm it, this may be a little bit too much information but it kind of demonstrates what I'm talking about like I do have quite bad allergies and sometimes like if I blow my nose I will notice a lot of wear around my nose quite quickly um, which I kind of have 
got a little bit but well really not so much so I'd normally have for the way that my allergies are playing up today so I'm perplexed by this foundation it's a very different one to what I'm accustomed to in terms of how it's wearing on the skin you know the application like everything it really is an unusual product so I think I'm liking it I wouldn't say that it's like a favorite it's it's just too weird I think it would take some getting accustomed to to be honest before I would fall in love with this yeah I'm liking it so far I'm going to talk about the packaging a little bit because I think when I did my first impressions my initial impressions I was sort of focusing more on the fact that you know you have to apply it with your fingers um, I did mention that I think it's pretty small it's only 20 mil as opposed to the standard 30 mil for a foundation but I do quite like the packaging I think you know it would stand out to me in the drugstore on the shelves I would probably look at this and be like oh that's a bit different what is it um, because it's so small I might sort of wonder like is it a foundation what is it I like that it's a frosted glass bottle because not only does that look quite chic um, it's also going to protect against sort of um, the sunlight getting into the product and breaking down that SPF for example. Um, not overly keen on this sort of purple but I guess it stands out. It, it's not offensive. I do really like the packaging and it, well it's so small that it's not particularly heavy despite having a frosted glass packaging. Um, and you could easily slip this into your bag. I think, I know it's glass but it looks quite thick the glass so I don't think it would sort of break easily. I wouldn't sort of worry about well, I obviously wouldn't go to drop it on my bathroom floor, but I I wouldn't sort of be too concerned that this would shatter really, really quickly. It feels like it's pretty hardy packaging. So um, yeah, I quite like that in terms of packaging. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, I'm going to have some lunch now and I will check back in a bit. Hope you're all enjoying the video and uh, just stay watching to keep up to date with my thoughts throughout the day. Hello everyone, it is coming up to 3 o'clock so I thought that I would check in with another update on how I feel that the L'Oreal Nude Magique Eau de Tente foundation is wearing. Um, overall, I don't really have too much to add because I think that it's wearing really well. I haven't noticed any sort of wearing off of it anywhere on my face, um, even on my chin which is where I tend to be oiliest and get some sort of product breakdown more quickly there normally. Um, no oxidization so overall I'm really happy with how this is wearing I feel that it's staying true to the initial application in terms of the finish and the color I knew that this was called something else in the US and it was really annoying me so I looked it up in between sort of applying this this morning and talking to you now and so whilst it's called the nude magique eau de tente here in the UK in the US it's called magic nude liquid powder um, exactly the same product though from what I can tell other than that I think the packaging is slightly different I think the US one's got a bit of white here on the design anyway that was a really short update but I just thought I'd check in and I will see you all in a bit with my final thoughts of the day hello everybody it is coming up to half past four so I thought I would come in with my final thoughts of the day on the L'Oreal Nude Magique Eau de Tente foundation. So overall I've been impressed with how this has worn throughout the day. It hasn't oxidized so it hasn't changed color throughout the day and it's also worn really well as well so um, I haven't noticed any sort of wear even in my t-zone particularly around my chin which is where I would normally get wear. So perhaps that's down to the sort of liquid to powder formulation. I said that when I applied it I didn't really notice any scent apart from when I sniffed it out of the bottle it had an alcohol scent. Um, that's the size of the opening by the way just so you can see. Um, it does contain alcohol, I've looked into that so whether this is going to cause any problems with my skin I'm not too sure obviously I can't comment on that today because I've only worn it for one day. I would be a little wary, I don't know if that's why it's such a liquidy formulation and so the alcohol helps it to evaporate and then it settles down into this powder finish. It certainly felt sort of very silicone and velvety as I was applying it and I have noticed the powdery finish throughout the day. It actually looks very natural, it doesn't look cakey or sort of powdery, it's just more of a, a sort of satin velvety finish. Um, I wouldn't say matte as such because I think it's um, I think it's a more natural finish than a matte finish. It's very skin-like. It feels like I'm wearing nothing on the skin. And as I said, it had that very sheer coverage as well. I did like that it was buildable, but it did take a while to build up. Now, this is a smaller size than you would normally get in a foundation. Most foundations that I've experienced in a liquid form have been 30 mil. This is just 20 mil. But I do think that a little goes a long way. I mean, obviously, you can build it up, but I didn't feel that I needed to use too much. Um, 
you could there could be wastage if you pour this out it's so liquidy it really is like a water-like texture so you are going to get wastage if you do that so i would literally apply it as i did by tipping it onto your finger dotting it around the face and then blending it in i wouldn't use this with a sponge or a brush as they recommend to apply it with the fingers and i do think that that's a good recommendation because i think a sponge or a brush particularly a sponge would probably just soak up all of the product and that there would then be wastage. Even though you're getting less product, I think the fact that you don't really need a powder with this because it goes to a powder finish, um, you're gonna save money there. If you're a beginner in makeup, then you're not gonna need to invest in brushes because you can apply this with your fingers. In fact, it's better to do so. So in that respect, I think it's sort of, you know, there's a trade-off and you're getting better money, better value for money. Um, because I applied my concealer afterwards, I like to set that with a powder, so I still did some powdering just through my T-zone and sort of where I'd covered the blemishes, so, um, well, the more acne scars actually, but I just wanted to set my pow I just wanted to set my concealer, so I still used a powder, and it did kind of confuse me, because I was like, am I meant to use a powder with this or not? I certainly don't think you need to, but I just like to set my concealers. I'll continue to use this, but whether I'd repurchase it, I don't know. I probably wouldn't use it as my everyday foundation just because it did take a little bit longer sort of layering it on and blending in my concealer. I mean, I, you know, because I'm still going to use my powder, that's not exactly like missing a step there. Um, and I think that if I was in a hurry, I'd probably spill it and cause a mess. I'm quite clumsy. I can't see myself reaching for this on an everyday basis. But, you know, maybe if I had a bit more time at a weekend, then I would reach for it. I'd like it but I don't know if I like it enough that it would make me repurchase it because of the application of it. It's also got an SPF 18, so great for during the day, but I wouldn't use it if there was going to be flash photography at night, for example. And I do think this would be a good foundation for beginners because, as I said, you're not going to need to use sort of a brush. Um, I also think that, you know, if, assuming that beginners to makeup are a bit younger, Generally, I don't think a cakey, heavy foundation looks good on younger skin. Embrace your younger skin, and I think a sheer formulation such as this is fine. It's pretty affordable at $9.99, and they're always doing on offers in Boots and Superdrug. Having said that, the reason that I wouldn't suggest this for beginners is because you're going to be a bit limited on the shades. You're certainly not going to have a counter where you can help get someone to help you choose your shade. and. I managed to make this work for me, and looking at it now, I think it's fine. I think it's getting a bit dark. Sorry if the lighting is fading. I always film in natural light. Um, sorry, anyway. I was extremely disappointed to note that this is only available in six shades here in the UK. In the US, it's available in 12 shades. So quite why it's only available in half the amount of shades over here, I don't know. Completely beyond me why they would do that. Maybe they'll roll out the extra shades as this sort of gathers popularity. We'll see. I'm, I'm not too sure what the reasoning is behind that. It really is a unique foundation though, so I would recommend trying it because it could be something that you would like, but just be aware that it is a very sheer finish and that you are going to be limited on the shade range. But in terms of longevity, I've been impressed. It's worn really well. I do wonder if this would be good for those with dry skin because I suspect that it would cling to those drier patches, particularly if you've got any sort of flaky areas. Um, in that case, I think it would be better for normal to combination or even oily skin because of the wear. But because it goes to that powder finish, I'm not too sure that you'd like this if you have dry skin. I mean, I've personally never tried anything like it, but I have heard that this has been compared to a Giorgio Armani foundation, and they are owned by the same company. So it could be a good wallet-friendly alternative if you were interested in that Giorgio Armani foundation. I, I can't comment on whether it's a dupe or not because I haven't tried it. So those are my thoughts, a bit of a like on the fence, I like it but I'm not sure that I would repurchase it and I would only recommend it to those that don't have dry skin. I think you really do need to sort of be aware that it's a very, very sheer coverage as well so um, just watch out for that, you are going to have to build it up if you want anything more than just like a tint to your skin. So let's compare my thoughts now with what the company says it does, I've got the L'Oreal website here on my laptop. Maybe this might help with the lighting a bit. I suspect that this is getting really dark. Sorry. It says, L'Oreal's first lighter than water foundation formulated by L'Oreal Paris makeup laboratories to provide skin with a new silky nude finish. I would agree with that. It's a very, very lightweight, both in terms of formulation and how it feels on the skin. 
and it did have a silky finish. The ultra fine extra liquid formula has a luxurious fingertip application and unique sensorial and unique sensor I can't say that word and unique sensorial texture that provides undetectable coverage and leaves skin looking invisibly perfected. Um, I would agree that it's an ultra fine extra, extra liquid foundation. I've never tried anything with such a liquidy formula. I don't think there's anything luxurious about having to apply it with my fingertips. I would prefer a pump or something, but I think that's the only way of doing it so that you don't get wastage. A unique sensorial texture. It feels very lightweight and it is unique in terms of the formula. In terms of the texture, I wouldn't say it's that unique. It feels sort of silicone-y when you first apply it and then it goes to a powder finish. Provides undetectable coverage. I would agree with that. It looks extremely natural and leave skin looking invisibly perfected. I wouldn't agree with that because it, it looks very natural as I said, but it certainly is not gonna look invisibly perfected. It's far too sheer for that. You're gonna need extra products like concealer to help give that illusion of perfection. Seriously guys, I'm really sorry about the, the lighting. Please don't hate me too much for it. Okay, so it says the innovative silk to the touch texture of nude magique eau de tente is created using oils that evaporate as the super fluid foundation touches skin, resulting in easy, no grease, uniform blending. The smart, water-free formula leaves behind only specific oils so skin stays both comfortable and perfectly nude. Okay, so that's a little bit misleading, talking about the oils that evaporate and how it's very sort of clever and sort of technologically advanced. I do think it is clever and innovative. However, this does contain alcohol and I think that's probably what's really causing the evaporation. However, it, my skin has felt comfortable throughout the day. To provide an extremely light texture with such a smooth, endless glide, the pigment is perfectly dispersed in the unique, in, sorry, in the, in the ultra, sorry, in the ultra fluid formula for a flawless colour that can be applied seamlessly in just one action. That's pretty much nothing, really. that's not really saying anything, is it? Nude Magique Eau de Tente is applied just like a perfume with an ultra fine extra liquid formula designed to be applied by fingertips. Okay, I think they're sort of stretching their little marketing spiel here a little bit. Simply tip the bottle to drop the perfect dose onto the pad of the index finger, dot directly onto the skin, blot and blend. Innovative, lighter than water texture means a little goes a long way and lasts even longer. I have found it long wearing and I, do, I agree with that. I think a little does go a long way, although it's buildable and I appreciate that it's buildable. Okay, so just the final sort of bullet points that they say to summarize, no makeup feel. I'd agree with that. I feel like I've got nothing on my skin. Silky nude breathable skin finish. Again, feels very breathable and comfortable to wear. Simple fingertip application. To me, that's a downside and not a selling point, but okay. Smooth glide, non-greasy texture. Yeah, I haven't felt any greasiness and I haven't even felt any oils breaking through on my skin throughout the day either. Long-lasting undetectable coverage. It has been long wearing and I do think it looks very natural. Non-comedogenic, non non so it's not gonna clog pores. We'll see, I can't comment today, just on one day's wear. SPF 18 and PA++, so that's good. And six perfect nude shades, as I said, massive downside for me that they've only, as I said, massive downside for me that they've only launched six as opposed to 12 shades here in the UK. Anyway, I hope that you found this review useful. Do let me know if you've tried this or if you plan on checking it out. And subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see more reviews. Do let me know if you've got any requests as well for first impressions videos. I always alternate between high-end and drugstore. I'll link all the other ones that I've done so far to date, but the next one will be a high-end review. And I'm sorry again about the lighting. In the meantime, I hope that you enjoyed this, and thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.